Hello and welcome to episode 34 of the By the Lakeside podcast. My name is Sandy and this is a podcast about my knitting and sewing that takes place here in my home studio which is by the lake just outside of Toronto in Canada. It is January 17th so happy new year to everyone. I hope you're having an amazing start to the new year. Um, it has been really busy for me. I had a big deadline that I finished just this week, so I'm feeling really relieved about that and finally excited to kind of get my start to the new year going. I did participate in Vlogmas this year, so for everyone that watched and commented, it was so much fun. I just wanted to thank you all for joining in on the conversation and just making it really enjoyable. It was a lot. And right after Christmas, I kind of had a, um, a full-on chillax mode week where I did do some work, but I was really exhausted and kind of picking up the pieces from December. It was really, really, um, it was hectic, but I really enjoy doing Vlogmas. It's a lot of fun. So I haven't been able to do a regular podcast in a long time. So today I think I have a lot to share. I have a few finished objects. I have... Um, some things that had come in the mail December and January, some of them I didn't get a chance to show in Vlogmas, so I wanna share those today, and some other exciting things. So I'm just gonna jump right in, but first I will tell you where else you can find me. On Instagram, I am Sandy by the Lakeside. I post there quite a bit. On Ravelry, I am Sandy Ran. I also have a By the Lakeside podcast group, not there that much, but if there is anything that you want to ask me about the podcast or anything, um, I do try to check in there once in a while. And I also have a website which is bythelakeside.com where I sell project bags and leather goods. So let's just jump in to the finished object section of the podcast. I am not one to normally have a lot of finished objects. I realize that I don't finish things because I probably have um, I have a short attention span and I've cast on a lot of things in the last year or two, like a lot of us do. And I don't have a, a lot of guilt over it because I get very excited. And I think it's just been the last year or two, probably more like two years, that I've discovered so many new to me pattern designers, yarn dyers. So it's just been so exciting to cast on all the things. And sometime in December, I realized that I wasn't finishing enough and I really want more things to focus on, finish and wear because I'm really enjoying wearing the items. So I did a quick flip through in Vlogmas of a lot of the whips that I had in various baskets around the house. And it really inspired me to pick out the ones that I want to focus on and frog the ones that are going to have to be let go of. And I haven't done that yet because like I said, I've been really busy with a deadline, but that's coming up. I think I might even film that if I can manage to do that. Um, I'm, I'm going to take everything out. I'm going to film the process, I hope. And then my plan is to have one sweater, one shawl, and one small project on the go. No more than that. I have lots more on the needles, but they're going to be tucked away, and I'm just gonna to try to focus on each of those three things. And I think I'd actually heard um, Trish from the Tie-Dye Diva. I love her podcast, if you have not watched her. Um, she's wonderful and has such a wonderful spirit. And she mentioned that in one of her podcasts, how she likes to have the three. And that way, if you don't feel like uh, working on the sweater, you can jump over to a shawl, which is normally what I enjoy knitting, and have one small project, whether it be a hat or socks. And I'll probably always have a pair of vanilla socks going because they're really nice to take along with you. So that's my plan. Once I did that, I seemed to just bang out the projects in December. The first one is my adventurous wrap. It is really big, so it's a little bit hard to show you, but I do have pictures on Instagram and also I do have a projects page for this wrap on Ravelry. I love this. Um, I started it probably last spring and I put it down a few times because it's pretty big, but I've talked about it a lot, so I won't go into too much detail. The pattern is by Amba O'Brien. 
it is called the Adventurous Wrap because it's meant to use an Advent kit. So this was an Advent or an Adventurous Wrap kit from Nice and Knit, which I got quite a while ago, and it's just beautiful. They're sold out right now, but they're constantly updating and doing new colors. It's absolutely one of my favorite things that I have made. I've been wearing it nonstop. It's really light, it's um, fingering weight. So any of your minis that you've been collecting or advent calendars that you've had would make a great um, kit for this. It's so pretty. So I've talked about it a ton. I'm probably not gonna say too much else about it except that I absolutely love it. I can't stop wearing it and I'm so happy that just focusing on this even though it was hard at the end, the rows were really, really long. Uh, I'm just really happy that it's done and it made me feel like a knitter again, like I actually was focused and could finish some projects. So I'm really, really pleased with this project. I finished this on Christmas Eve and I wore it Christmas Eve and hasn't come off since. So after I finished the Adventurous Wrap, I decided to work on something else that was on my needles for quite a while. I think, I can't remember if it's been, I might have cast it on a year ago. So it's been on the podcast many times, but I, I want to share it again because it's finally finished. And it is the Patiki Cowl by Aroha Knits. And I used Primrose yarn for this project in the um, Jasper DK. The colors that I used, the gray is called Abyss, and the other color is Soda Pop. And it's beautiful with peach and green and kind of a yellow. It's really, really pretty. I decided that I really wanted more winter accessories because I haven't finished that many. I have had a few hats and I've made a few for gifts, but I thought this would be perfect. Um, when you're just running in and out of stores and you don't want a big huge scarf, it keeps you warm. Hasn't really been that cold here yet, but um, it's starting to get cold. So I really love this project. It actually is not as complicated as it looks. It's quite a simple two color um, pattern and I found it really easy. I didn't do anything special. I don't even hold the yarn in two different hands. I just kind of flip the yarn from um, that, that I need to use and use that or put it in my working hand and I really enjoyed it. I think I was a little bit more than halfway done when I decided to pick this up and once I started going again um, in the week after Christmas, it was just my um, relaxing sit on the couch and watch movies kind of project. So, so happy that this is done and it now lives in my accessories basket which I keep near my front door so when it's cold, I can just grab whatever I feel like, but it's such a beautiful pattern. I would highly recommend this if you want to try color work and you are not too sure. It's got a really easy to read pattern and um, this yarn was also a lot of fun. I thought it was a lot of fun to pick out a pop color and it would also be a good stash buster project if you have DK in your stash. So I love this, really, really happy. And so I was on a complete roll. I finished two projects at that point and I decided that I wanted to make a hat. So this is my Tamatic hat by Shannon Cook, who I think is very Shannon on Instagram. And I've been wanting to make this pattern since it came out. I think I purchased it the second it was released. I love it. It's using a chunky yarn. And I don't have the tag here for this because it's been finished for a while, but this is a Jill Draper yarn that I picked up uh, when I went to Rhinebeck this year. It's beautiful, it's very, um, it's kind of a rustic, really kind of um, earthy feeling hat or yarn. And this pattern was so easy and quick. I think I finished this in two days, maybe two and a half. I love it. It's, um, it's really warm, so for the really cold days here, it's perfect. I love the color. I cannot remember um, the base, the name of the yarn base. Um, 
and I think the color is called powder pink, but I also have project pages for all of these. I made it a point to update everything um, in case anyone had any questions and I misplaced my tags. The pom-pom on here is also really beautiful. It's one of those ones that you just tie on the inside, which I think is so handy. I have such a problem sewing on pom-poms. I can't seem to do it very well. So I'm loving these pom-poms that you can tie on or that have the snap. And I got this one at my new favorite yarn shop that is in Toronto. It's called The Knitting Loft. And I did talk about it in Vlogmas. I had a visit there with some friends and um, loved it. It's beautiful. I could buy a lot in that store. So I started with this pom-pom and I'm gonna show you something else I got there in a little bit. So yeah, third finished object. I can't believe myself. I don't know what happened, but I was super focused. It felt so good to get two projects off my needles that were lingering for so long. And then while we were watching movies over the holidays, I decided to do the hat, which was also really, really fast and sort of an instant gratification project. So once those were done, I decided I wanted to cast on another cowl. I really like cowls and the three color cashmere cowl from Hohi Locatelli is something I've been looking at for a long time and I thought it would be a perfect piece for my wardrobe. And I love plucky yarn, so these are the colors that I am using for the three color cashmere cowl. I love them. This is plucky yarn in the Primo fingering. And my amazing friend Meg from Woolen Cookies is so great and was my personal shopper at her local yarn shop's Christmas party this year where they had all of these holiday or winter colors from Plucky. Her shop or her local yarn shop is Woolen Honey. How lucky is she? And she helped me pick out these colors and I love them. I love them so much. I cannot remember the names right now, but I do have a project page and um, I knew I wanted something kind of neutral that would go with everything. And then I thought this color was so pretty and the name has something to do with Michigan. So I kind of liked that it would remind me of Meg because she lives in Michigan. So I'm really excited about this. I did cast on right after um, I'm all tangled. I did cast on right after I finished the other projects, but I haven't had much time at all. I got very busy with some sewing. So this is all I have, but um, I just finished my huge deadline for sewing this week. So I'm finally back on track with my knitting. I had a few weeks of um, not much knitting time at all. So I'm really excited about that project. And I also decided that I wanted another hat for when I go to New York next week. So that project I've cast on is in one of my project bags. And I did show this yarn in Vlogmas as well. It's so beautiful. It is the Cookie Gate from Chelsea Yarns. This is the DK and this is the mohair. And it's absolutely gorgeous. Christina from Chelsea, Chelsea Yarns or the Chelsea Pearls podcast is a genius with colors. Look at that. And she was so amazing and sent me this gorgeous pom-pom. I cannot wait. Look at this color. I think it's perfect. Oh, it's so pretty. I cannot wait. So I think this is also going to be a fun, quick knit. I am knitting the road trip and hat which is a pattern from Christina and I've just started this one as well but look at how it's knitting up it's beautiful the halo on there is so pretty and I'm loving how these colors are turning out so look at that isn't that gonna be beautiful love it so I have a week I think I can do it I still have lots of other things to do before the trip, but I'm pretty sure I can manage. So I think I'm gonna finish this hat and then my knitting for the trip will actually be um, my three color cashmere cowl. So that is what I will bring with me. Here is Chelsea Lux Yarns Ball Band. 
And yeah, those are my two works in progress that I am having so much fun with. And um, I'm trying to get back into my routine, my routine of knitting just a little bit every day. I tend to just focus on one thing and go crazy until I'm done. So um, all the sewing that I did finished on Monday and it it's taken me two days since then to catch up on cleaning the house, getting things organized again and um, paperwork and all that kind of stuff that has gone to the wayside. So talked about my finished objects. I've talked about my whips, dream knitting. I do have some dream knitting I wanted to share. There's not too much because I am, I think once, once I get back from New York, I am going to pick up one of the two shawls that I have on my needles right now and that is going to be my next project. So I've got the cowl, I will have one of my older shawls that I'm going to try to finish and I do have some small projects that are kind of exciting that I want to cast on. So this beautiful yarn is also from Chelsea Lux Yarns. This color is Sunday Times and I really want to do a chunky hat with another pom-pom and this is a black one. So gorgeous. I love it. And I think this is going to be the Chelsea Mixer hat. And that's also from the Chelsea, uh, Christina from the Chelsea Pearls podcast. So I'm obsessed with all of her yarn right now. I have one more that she sent me and it's gorgeous. Oh, this one here is the Chelsea Lux Chunky. And I mentioned that's Sunday Times, but I also have this Chelsea Lux Baby Alpaca. And this color is called Fun Times. And I think I kind of want to make mittens or fingerless gloves with this. I think it's so pretty. Look at the colors. So I'm having a lot of fun, but I am also trying to stay focused and I think I'm doing a really good job so far. I might even, um, I might try to film a little bit of my project um, organization. I'm not sure, we'll see how that goes, if I can manage to film it and um, it not distract me too much because I think there might be a few things coming off the needles, project bags need to be cleaned up and I might start baskets for shawls, sweaters, and small projects that I've already started. And then when I finish one, I will just grab from the basket whichever one is calling to me the most. So that is my dream knitting. I think next I will show you or share with you a couple other things that I got um, that I wasn't able to share over Vlogmas or have come since. I've put a few beautiful things in this bag, which is one of the other items I picked up when I was at the Knitting Loft in Toronto. It is the Hedgehog Fibers Clear Tote Bag, and I love it. So pretty. So I have all kinds of goodies in here that I want to share. One of them did come during Vlogmas, and for some reason I never, um, I never got a chance to show it. And it is this beautiful yarn that a friend sent to me. Um, it is... Andrea from I'm gonna put her um, Instagram name on the screen. I never know if I'm pronouncing it right, but Andrea is a prolific knitter She she just knits the most beautiful Projects if you haven't checked out her Instagram, you really should She sent me a sweet Christmas package this year that included this Julie Aslan um, Yarn which is in the color pixel and the base is um See, it's a 90% superwash merino and 10% silk. Oh, it's so pretty. It's a the Lazu fingering. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Andrea. Um, she also sent me a couple of other little things, but they're all over the house already. So I wanted to share that because I thought it was beautiful and I love Julie Aslan yarns. And I think this might be a really pretty yarn to do a one skein project, like a shawl. Like a smaller shawl, but we'll see. It's going into my um, my bin, and I'm going to be very organized and not cast anything on just yet. I actually won a prize, which very very rarely happens to me, and I wanted to share it because it was so generous. It was um, Bethany from Woolberry Fiber Company. 
she did an Instagram giveaway and I was picked. So the lucky winner got to choose two skeins of, I think anything from her holiday collection. And so I picked two of the same because I was also thinking it could be another cowl or I could do some really fun mittens. And this is what I chose. They're so pretty. This is the Berry Cozy DK Base, which is 80% superwash merino, 10% cashmere, 10% nylon. Wow, so pretty. And the color for both of these is Peppermint Bark. And I really liked this one because um, it was kind of neutral and I loved that it was pink, but it had these dark kind of chocolatey, almost black parts to it. So beautiful, I love them. So that was really a fun surprise. Thank you so much, Bethany. Her yarn is so gorgeous. I have a little bit of her yarn already and I'm so excited to have this in my collection. So the last ones I wanna show you that I received were a surprise in the mail also. The really sweet Rebecca from Fuse Fiber Studio. She sent me um, two skeins of her hand dyed yarn, which was so generous of her and totally not necessary, um, but she sent them as a thank you for a donation I made sorry, I have mohair, for a donation I made to one of her giveaways last year. She sent me these two gorgeous skeins of yarn. And in her card, she mentioned that she thought that these two colors in particular would look perfect in my penguono that I'm dreaming about. So I have a bag set aside with all of these beautiful yarns that I think will make a gorgeous penguono. And these are gonna go right into there next. So the first one is Fuse Fingering Base, which is 100% Superwash Merino. It's a two-ply, and this color is called Berry. It's really beautiful. I love this color. And the second one is the Fuse Merino Singles, and it is 100% Superwash Merino. It's a single-ply, which I love single-ply. And this color is cake batter, just so soft, gorgeous. I cannot wait. I think they're gonna be perfect. So thank you so much, Rebecca. That was such a sweet surprise. And there's her label right there. So that was some happy mail, fun things, and um, really excited about those. And I wanted to share something I did share on my Vlogmas, but I wanted to show it again because it is so adorable in case you didn't watch Vlogmas. I received this cute, adorable, little mini tote bag from my sweet friend, Sandra. And um, she picked the perfect fabric for me. This is a Rifle Paper Company fabric. And she used a tutorial online. If I can remember it, I will put it on the screen. Um, but it was just something on um, Pinterest that she told me she found. But it's so beautiful. And Sandra has um, an Etsy shop that I wanted to let you know about. It's called Fiber Insanity. I'll put it on the screen too, but there's her label. And we spell fiber R-E because we're Canadian. And um, it's just so beautifully made. I can't, I can't even handle the cuteness of this little bag. And I haven't figured out what I'm gonna use it for. It might actually be good for some of my stationary supplies and journaling or notions, but it's so cute. And she has lots of other project bags and things in her shop. I just wanted to share it with you because I think it's so cute. And there's pockets inside too. So that was something else that I wanted to share. Next, I thought I would talk a little bit about what I've been working on in my sewing room. It has been nonstop sewing since before Christmas, but the last few weeks have really been hardcore, crazy town over here. I finally finished all of the project bags that I have done for the Nice and Knit booth at Vogue Knitting Live. Super excited that it is next weekend. So if you are at Vogue Knitting Live in New York next weekend, please come by the Nice and Knit booth and say hello. I will definitely be there on the Saturday from 12 to 3. I will probably also be around um, here and there throughout the weekend, but I'm scheduled to be there uh, specifically at that time. So if you'd like to come and say hi, please do. I would love to see you in person. 
and I thought I would share the bags with you because I don't think I showed them to you when we spoke about Vogue Knitting Live on one of the last podcasts I did with Eric from Sticks Plus Twine. So, um, I am so, it's always a pleasure to do a collaboration with anyone, but I was so excited, obviously, about this project because it's Vogue Knitting Live and how fun is that, but also the ladies at Nice and Knit are just... They're the sweetest and nicest ladies you could ever imagine. They are sisters and um, they have a beautiful feed on Instagram. Their style, like everything that they put out, their photography, um, even their podcasts. They don't have too many, but I love their podcast too. Um, I just felt like our style was very in line with one another. And so when they asked, I couldn't be happier. I was over the moon about it. And so... We had a few conversations and we decided to do something a little bit different from my usual bag. Um, we did, instead of canvas on the bottom, we decided to do a cotton linen blend that has a sparkle in it. We just thought, how much fun would this be for New York? We called these the City Lights bags and this is the small one. And on the top, it is a very light denim with these neon flecks or neps scattered throughout, which is so much fun. It's a little bit, you don't really see it from a distance, but when you look at it closely, it's so much fun. And I found these beautiful silver tassels. And because it's special, I wanted to add something special. So we added, oops, these little charms, which are scissors. Maybe I'll show you on the other one or this way. These cute little scissor charms. Really, really sweet. And the inside has a gingham print in a silver color again. And I think they're so cute. So a little bit different from my usual bags that have the canvas on the bottom, but um, it's such a fun, fun fabric. And we both or we all love denim, so it just seemed right to all of us to do something with denim. The large project bags have the same base with the silver, which is so much fun. And we decided to do um, a heavier weight black denim, which is really sleek and classic, and then put the same tassels, the silver and the little silver scissors progress keeper on there or charm so you can put this on your project as a progress keeper or you can keep it on your bag or put it on another one and the large bag also has the handle so these are the city lights bags that will be available next week at vogue knitting live so excited and we've had a lot of questions online about doing some kits so we're looking into that we'll see um the ladies at Nice and Knit have dyed the most stunning colors. One of them um, is called Times Square. You can see it on both my Instagram and theirs, and they had some photos of it with this bag, and it was just amazing. So we've, we've talked, and we're gonna see if we can manage to um, maybe do something online for those after Vogue, but we'll keep you posted on that. So that is super exciting, that is, um, on my mind now to prepare for the trip and hopefully we're just going to have a lot of fun. And I have some shop news too, or a little bit of um, shop info to add to this. Um, obviously the these bags have taken a lot of my time, so I do apologize for not having um, another update. I do like to have an update once a month, but over Christmas and working on these, um, it sort of set me back a little bit. So when I do get back from Vogue, I'm going to be working really hard on another update. There are some leather pouches on my website right now, but I am going to be working on just my regular project bags. So stay tuned for those. And I'm also going to try to do some more small pouches because I've gotten a lot of questions about them. There probably won't be a ton because they're really time consuming, but I do have um, some of these planned for my next update. I'm really hoping that it will be in February, probably right at the end, but um, fingers crossed. So please be patient with me. Um, it's been a little bit challenging to keep up with regular updates, um, 
but it's a good problem. So I hope you understand and I'm doing my best to um, get back to our regular program now that the Vogue bags are done. I do have um, a few other things planned for this spring. Oh, I have something new that I am considering bringing to the shop that I'm really excited about. It is this really cute leather cover for my uh, scissors. And it is so adorable and it just makes it so easy to pop these into um, your project bag or your notions pouch without worrying about them. So I think it's also a great way to use um, smaller pieces of leather that you might not have a use for. And it's got my logo or part of my logo on there. So I am working on getting some of these in the shop in the spring too. I'm loving them. And um, lots of more, lots more sewing will be happening soon. So um, I will be posting about that on Instagram and also on my website. I also wanted to mention a couple things about my website. Um, I did want to remind once again that all of the prices on my website are in Canadian dollars. There is a little drop down um, bar at the top left of the main page or the home page that you can adjust that. I think you can only adjust it to US dollars if you prefer to see it that way. But um, if you don't adjust it and you are purchasing in Canadian dollars, then you will be charged accordingly to your currency um, through your banking or through your, uh, like whether it's PayPal or credit card. So I had a lot of questions about that in one of my last updates. I just wanted to make sure that everyone was aware that my prices are Canadian and um, if you are in the US, then your price would actually be quite a bit lower. I think our exchange is still not very good. Um, also, I have been putting um, or updating my blog a lot more this past month. So I have lots on the journal section of my website, but the one thing I wanted to mention is that I am unable to answer comments on the, on the blog. I've looked into it, I've contacted the, um, the website uh, maintenance people and they don't have that. I would have to figure out sort of a, an add-on app, which I haven't been able to do. So what I'm trying to do is uh, just post an additional comment. So if you have asked something, um, you might want to just go back and check in the comment section to see if I post anything there. And if you don't get an answer, I'm, I'm sorry about that. I may have missed it because I don't really have a, a great way to respond to those right now. So you can always ask me questions here on YouTube in the comment section. You can also, um, if you do have a question, post it in the Ravelry podcast group. Um, and I think that covers that. The last few things I wanna talk about are some of my favorite things, which I always love including. So if you're not interested, then thank you so much for watching all of the knitting and sewing content. And um, I always get so many uh, questions during Vlogmas or questions about my favorite things that I thought it would be fun to put in a few for January especially. So, First, I want to talk about this new hand cream that was a gift from my friend Eric, and I'm really loving it. It is the Aqua di Parma in Fico di Amalfo. It's just a really nice, it's kind of small, it's a really nice cream to pop into your purse or even in your notions bag or project bag, which I always have to have a hand cream, especially this time of year. My hands are really, really dry. This one is beautiful. It's kind of fresh. It's not greasy, it's really, really nice. And I'm just loving these little tubes. I also got a great one from my friend Ramona. That is the, um, it's one of my favorites. It's the, it's by L'Occitane. And it's their, I think it's, I can't remember the name of it, but it's their classic one. And that's in another project bag of mine. So these little hand creams that are in tubes, I've just been popping them in every project bag that I have on the go or Notions pouch or in my purse. And speaking of purse, I wanted to share, because this is an old one of mine, but I pulled it out. I've been carrying really, really big bags for quite some time. I decided to pull out one of my not so big bags. It's still roomy, but it's one of my favorites. It's um, a satchel bag from the Cambridge Satchel Company. There's their logo. 
and I got this like a year or two ago when they had a big sale. So they're a little bit pricey. They are, um, I order from their website, which is, I think it's, I think they're in Lon London or maybe they're in Cambridge. I don't know, but they're in England and um, they're really well made satchel bags and they're so classic and they usually have really fun colors. Can't remember what this color was, but it was a color that was on sale and um, I love it. So it's really, really nice. You can get it engraved, which I kind of wish I had my, um, not engraved or embossed. I kind of wish I had my initials done on it, but I was in such a rush to get it because I'm annoying like that. But it's a beautiful bag and this is what I've been carrying around the last little while. Um, I have a lip gloss. I got a lot of questions during Vlogmas about makeup and I love makeup. So I wanted to share one that I'm really happy with in case you missed it during Vlogmas. I don't buy a ton of lipsticks or lip glosses. I don't really use, I, I'm constantly using lip balm, but I wanted to try this Fit Glow Beauty. It's the Lip Serum Lip Gloss. And this one is in the color Bliss, which is super, super like natural. You can hardly see it. It's just a little bit of sparkle. I'm wearing it now and I really loved it. So I wanted to share that this is, um, this was a good purchase from December and I'm really enjoying it. It's not sticky. It doesn't have a, a scent or fragrance and I really like it. So that is Fit Glow Beauty. Um, I've purchased off their website or on well.ca. I'm not sure. I think a lot of spas carry this brand. So I wanted to share that. And the last thing I wanted to share is a new journal that I've decided to um, to kind of keep aside from my planner. And I've got this uh, little A6 Hobonichi in um, a Hobonichi cover. And I love this cover. It's um, fabric and it has a zipper. And my intention for this journal is to keep it in my bedroom or on my bedside table. And it's kind of like a happiness and gratitude journal, but my own kind of style of it. I was very inspired by um, by a couple people online. One of them is my sweet friend, Lori, from Love to Plan Lori. I think that's her Instagram name on Instagram. I'll put it up on the screen for you. Her journal and planner have just inspired me so much in the last few months. And um, even though this one's a little different, I took a lot of inspiration from her and also Art Journal Girl on YouTube. So I took kind of an idea from the Art Journal Girl. This is a monthly spread and every day of the month I am just putting a really simple thing, one thing that I am really thankful for and it can be um, something really, really small or something big, whatever. If it's a movie we saw that we really enjoyed or um, we went out to dinner, that kind of stuff. So I'm just putting a snapshot in here, which is helping me um, slow down, think about what I'm thankful for. And then I'm also using the pages for a whole bunch of other stuff. And I'm thinking if I can get myself together, and if you're interested, I might try to do a video showing you what notebooks and planners I'm using for 2019. I think I've got, um, I'm really excited about the system I have. I've got my planner, which I sort of put some documenting my daily stuff in as well, and it's kind of fun. I've planned this one, and then I have one other one that I am just going to get started as soon as it arrives in the mail. That is going to be kind of like a home and wellness journal, which sounds really complicated, and I'm trying to keep it really simple, but um, if you're interested in that, let me know, and maybe I will try to film what I'm using and how I'm using it, if that sounds good. And I'm also using or um, carrying around with this my little stationery or uh, travel pouch, which I had on my website um, last month. And these guys sold out. I love these little pouches. Um, I decided to use the small one for um, stationery. And I've got my large one with some needles and knitting notions in it. So. So I think that covers everything. I am really trying to start the new year off well. I'm having a late start because it's already the 17th, but just this week, um, I'm really starting to focus on simplifying again and uh, taking time for myself each day. 
and I have lots of ideas about that. So I might try to film, like I said, the um, the work in progress kind of reorganization in a video, and I might also try to do that planner video and journal video if you're interested. So um, I'm gonna leave it at that. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that if you are in New York next week that you will stop by the Nice Knit booth and say hello and um, stay tuned on my website if you are interested in what else is going on because I felt like after Vlogmas I had all these things to share and I wasn't filming those daily videos. So I'm trying to blog more, posting more on my website under the journal tab and um, that's been a lot of fun too. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.